Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to continue building Linux. <laughs> Last time we built Core Utils and a lot of other tools and Core Utils is that package that is very integral to the Linux environment. But there is still a lot of package to go so let's kick it off right on now. So first off we need to install Check. So let's unpack a check like that. It's a small package and this should only be configured with the prefix of USR. And this is 0.1 SPU, so it should not take that long to either configure or to actually make. And this will have an awk script to um, generate C unit test to use with a check unit test framework. So this is a test framework for C programs. So it's very small uh, for what it's actually capable to do. And uh, in, in the guide, they recommend that we run the checks for this as well. So we will run the unit tests for check. So we actually have a testing framework that actually works. It had only one test, so that passed without any problems. So after this test case has run its course, we will just run a make install. And then we also need to do a little bit of a change in the actual script. So it will look for things in the correct directory because now it's looking for things in tools USR but we wanted to look no it now it's looked in tools directory but we wanted to look in the USR directory so that's the only change that we need to do for this script so there were a few more tests to run so now we will make this install run this install, install script and then we will do this sed command that I talked about, which will change tools to USR. So we will call the correct things in this script when it's run. This also contains a library to write unit tests for your C program. So next, next up, we will need to build diff utils. So let's go in here and unpack diff utils and I believe I have talked about diff utils before so this is tools to check differences in your build and diff utils also needs to be configured with the prefix of USR so that's standard for all these packages we need to run the classical make script and then make check after that to see that we actually will pass all the tests. So I think I will run those in series so we know so we have them running after each other. So this configure script should not take that long to run. This is a little bit longer to build. It's 0.3 SPUs. So we'll, we'll take a little bit of time to build and check. So let's see when it's configured here. And it's soon done, yeah. So now we will run make and, and make check. So those will run now. And in this package we have compare CMP, which compares two files and reports whether or not, uh, whether or in which bytes they differ. So it's a byte diff of t files. And then we have diff, which compares two files or directories and reports which lines in the files differ. So though this diff utils is a little bit more like um, a text file diff. So compare is more for bytes and binaries, for instance, and diff is more for uh, text files. And then we have diff3, which compares uh, three files line by line. Interesting. And then we have sdiff, uh, merges two files and interactively outputs the result. 
So that's if you want to check two files and then merge them together. And here we have done all the checks. So let's install this package. It's not much more to it. Now we will go on to Guac. And Guac is a very G-Orc is a very competent package. We need to do some setup here. We need to remove all the extras in the make file in. So we need to go into the guac directory. So, so we don't, will not install any extras uh, because they are not needed. And then we will do a standard prefix to USR. And orc is this uh, command line util to push information through and change the th stream during this uh, um, piping. So you can actually pipe a file to orc and then do some mod modification and then push that back to a file. So it's manipulating streams uh, and doing both searches and using a different, so I made a did a make there, so a standard make. Uh, preparation. Um, so this is a program that for manipulating text files in GNU, um, an implementation of ORC. Uh, yeah, so you can use this either at the file or as something that you run in between. Pretty much like said, this interactive editor, um, but it's more uh, using different rules and almost like regular expressions in order to change files. I'm not really good at writing org scripts, so um, if you are very competent at that, you might get a bit have a better de description of this. But if you are not accustomed to it, just know that a lot of different utils. So I will do a check here as well. well make check. Um, a lot of utils and build scripts will use orc in order to modify the contents of different files. So that's, a, um, I would say, required for a Linux system to have orc. And it's also very good if you learn to write orc scripts, you know that most Linux system will have orc, so you can actually use it. So now we have checked it, all pa tests passed. So I will install it into the system. And then we need to do some installation of the documentation if we want that. So uh, it already exists. So let's copy some files over. There we have those. And uh, let's see what's next. Find utils. Utils for finding things. Let's see here. Find. Utils. Unpackage that one. And find utils. We also need to remove some tests. Um, so test lock. We need to remove that test because that might lock forever and not complete. And that's not what we want. Um, and then we have some small fixes and in the scripts that we need to do as well. We need to change all trilock file to IO uh, end of file scene. We need to do some changes uh, where we change up this uninst to an include instead. And we also need to define IO in backup to 100. These changes are required for this specific build in order to run uh, fine utils and build fi fine utils. Here we will build it with the prefix of USR as we usually do. And then we will set a local state dir to uh, uh, locate. So let's run that. And this local state dir is an option that changes the location of locate database to be in the var lib locate. Uh, so this is compliant with the standard Linux environment where the locate dir um, locate database should be located. So uh, 
that's why we are changing that up. And locate is a command to find, for instance, uh, strings, find uh, commands, find files in your file system. And you have something that runs in the background as a cron job and looks over the system to locate files. And that could be good to know that usually you have that in your Linux system. And we had some production environments where we seldomly looked for files, but we created and deleted a lot of files. We did a lot of file IO and changed things up. There were a lot of production going on. And then this caching and this uh, search engine that went through and actually indexed everything did a lot of work on those servers, which was not needed. So by actually turning this service off, we made the production environment more, um, more performant. So that could be good to know that usually in a Linux system you have this find utils which have a Kate database that is indexed to make searching easier and faster, but in some cases you might not want it. So let's do a make and make check to see that we have a good installation of find utils after it's done. So in this we will have the command find which search given directory trees for files uh, matching a specific criteria. We have locate which search through the, a database of file names and reports the names that contain a given string that match a given pattern. So that's the locate database. And then we have this update db which update the locate database, scans the entire file system including other, uh, other file systems that are currently mounted. And that was our problem that we had a large mounted directory that it actually went through and updated. So if you are running in a production environment with mounted, a lot of mounted directories, then maybe turn this off. And then we have xargs, and it, that can be used to apply a given command to a list of files. Uh, so uh, apply to uh, use to apply a given command to a list of files. Yeah, so xargs for me is actually taking some kind of inputs and making those inputs uh, to arguments for a com command. So that's how I remember using it. Um, haven't used xarg that many times, but that's what I remember. Um, if you have any other suggestions where you can use Xarge, then leave them in the comment section. So let's install this one and go on. After we have installed it, we actually need to move find to the bin directory. It's in the USR bin. Might be wrong there. And we also need to update, uh, let's see here, the USR update DB to um, change the bin directory to slash bin. So we know it knows where find is. So now we have changed those up. Next package. And that's Roth. So let's install Roth. Roth. Unpackage that one. Let's see what, what we need to do here. We need to set page to a paper size. I need to copy that command. Um, so Groff expects an environment variable page to contain the default paper size. If you're in the uh, UK or in um, US, you might choose letter. I will choose A4, that's the normal page size in Europe. So that's, uh, that's my preference. And uh, an A4 is a little bit interesting because you have an A1, which is I think a meter, and then you will, um, you will take that and actually fold it. And if you fold it one time, 
Then you have an A2. If you fold it again, you have an A3. And if you fold it again, you will have an A4. So that's uh, the measurement of an A4. We will make this with just one process. So we'll not do it in, uh, in a sequence. So, uh, or uh, in parallel. Parallel builds are not supported for this one. What do we get in the Groff package then? We will get, um, yeah, we will get something to uh, create font files for Groff. We will get, we will have something that can sh look for differences between Groff, Noffer and Toffer. Well, what's that? I don't know. Transfer sheet music written in Lillipond language into Groff language. So what is this? Contains programs for processing uh, and formatting text. Okay, so Groff is, I guess, a format, and then you can translate that to a lot of different things. Um, you can actually create PDFs from Groff, and you can create PS files for output. You have some pic to graph, which uh, converts a pic, pic diagram into uh, a shopped image, a cropped image, and. Um, yeah, there is a lot of tools here. You can transform ROF to HTML and PDFs and PS, yeah. So this format for ROF can be actually translated to a lot of different things and you can create graphs, you can, yeah, change them up and so on. I guess that this is used for some kind of printing mechanic or, and, or documentation perhaps, so it might be a required uh, program. I can't really say if uh, it is required. It's required for this installation. Uh, I have never used any of these commands. So uh, you might try to uh, not install this one and see if that works. I'm not sure what uh, dependencies Groth has for the other system packages. So that could be an interesting thing to look into. This will take 0.4 SPUs, so I will wait and come back to you when it's done. And we are back. We have built Graph, so let's make install and get that into our system as well. So that was Graph. Now we come to a package that is very interesting. And this is Grub. And there is another package that you also can use called Lilo, but Grub is very potent, uh, potent. This is the grand unified bootloader. So this is what we will use in order to start our Linux environment. So this is important to have. You need to have a bootloader. It doesn't really matter which one you have, but you need to have one. Uh, so, Let's go into the grub directory here and we will run a configure with the prefix of USR. We will use the sbin, uh, directory sbin. We will have the system configuration there etc. We will disable EFI EMU and we will disable W error. And EFI EMU is an option to minimize what is built by disabling a feature and testing programs not needed for LFS. Um, I think this EFI EMU is for newer systems that has an EFI uh, bias. You can start these applications without that, but I think that because that will give you a bootloader that is a little bit larger and has a little bit more functionality, which you can load into an EFI. So it's a new uh, format, but I guess that they don't want that complexity. So they will re remove that for now. And uh, the error uh, allows the build to complete with warnings produced by other uh, more recent flex versions. Okay. So we need to make this and this will take 1.6 SPUs, so I will wait 
and I'll get back to you when it's built. And we are back, so let's make install this one. And after it's installed, we need to move some bash completion script. So we'll have bash completion for grub. So I've talked about it uh, in an earlier video. Bash completion is using bash and pressing tab and you get some options for how you could should complete what you are currently typing and bash completion is different scripts for different applications. So for grub we will get some extra completion-y good things. So that's what we are copying over there. So let's see what's next up here. I think I will um, stop here. I think I will stop here and this video will be cut into uh, smaller parts. So this will be multiple videos and I hope that these videos in this series will help you learn a little bit more about the Linux environment, what goes into the Linux environment, what kind of tools and libraries you can find in a Linux environment, what you can do with the Linux environment. If you have any questions about Linux, leave them down in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer them as to my, my best knowledge. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.